Good morning, church. Welcome to Easter Sunday. We are so glad that you could join us. Now, this is the part of the service where we're about to partake in the elements as a form of remembering what Christ has done for us, and we call this communion. Now, it's going to be a little bit different because usually we do this together at church, but since we're all in quarantine, that's what we're going to, we're going to do this virtually, okay? Now, I also understand that not everybody has the elements, so I want you to take this time. We're going to do this after worship, but I'll give you guys enough time to prepare your elements. Grab whatever juice you can, grab whatever bread you can. It doesn't matter what we have on hand, but what matters is the act of remembering. Like, just to give you an example, I have, like, day-old bread right here, and I have juice, so, you know, this is what we have at home, and that's what we're going to make do, okay? So, hopefully I can see you guys later. Uh, we'll partake in the elements together. Oh, you have
was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Welcome back everyone. Hope you were all engaged in worship because it's important for us to have that right heart, that repentant heart before we partake in the remembrance of Christ's sacrifice. Now, this might be virtual and we might be doing this in our living rooms and our couches or in this case my bedroom, but this is something that we never take for granted. So I invite you to get into that posture, prepare to connect with God, prepare your elements and remember what Christ has done for us. I'll be reading 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 23 to 25. For I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. I invite you now to partake of the bread. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. Now partake of the cup. Now the verse after that, verse 26, it says, For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Now, this is the remembrance part where we often hear about, where we talk a lot about what Christ has done for us, where Christ has given his life, has shed his blood for our sins. Now, often than, often than not, we take that for granted. So, if I can ask you guys to just bow down in prayer, and just really reflect and remember what Christ has sacrificed. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your life. We thank you, Lord God, for the life that you have given for us, for people like us who are unworthy, Father God, to receive your grace, who are unworthy to receive your forgiveness. And yet, Lord God, even in our most sinful selves, Lord God, even though we were still sinners, you said in your word, you have died for us. And so we thank you, Lord God. We will never be able to repay that, Lord God. And all we can do is give our lives to you, Lord God, and serve you, Lord God, for the rest of our lives. We thank you, for God, for the bread of life. We thank you for your flesh that you have sacrificed on the cross. And we thank you for the new covenant, Lord God that replaces, Lord God, that horrible old covenant, Lord God, where we were bound to the law, but because of your new covenant, Lord God, we are now bound to life. We are now bound to you. We are now bound to your kingdom. And we pray, Lord God, that may we never forget this, that we may always walk in the new covenant, Lord God, that we may always remember you, Lord God, till the day you come back. Keep us, Lord God, keep us in your grace, keep us in your life, keep us in your blood. We thank you, we praise you, Lord God, in Jesus.
Hey everyone, thank you for joining us as we celebrate the most important event in the entire world and that is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He is alive, amen. Come on, give me a clap offering. Celebrate me with me in your couch. Enter your couch with thanksgiving for death has no power in our Savior. Hey, today I want to speak to you a brief message about the response that we should do this Easter. If you're listening today and you know a friend, a family member that haven't accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, I believe this is the greatest gift that you can give to them. And this is the invitation of salvation. So do me a favor. If you know someone in your heart that needs the message of hope, I want you to share this video in your timeline or maybe tag your friend, whatever you want to do. So just spread that message across them we want to experience the power of resurrection that because of it they too can be resurrected in the new life with jesus christ amen well today we are celebrating easter sunday and you may have heard of the story of easter right at least for me since i was a kid it's a very special event for us because we celebrate it in our homes and we also celebrate it in our church but I, what I come to realize is that it's possible to hear the word Easter and still not believe the power of it because you only heard it but did not spiritually experience it. You might have been celebrating Easter years by years and not really dis discover the power behind it. And that's okay. I'm not going to judge you. If you're that kind of person, because reality is people always want proof from what they can see, hear, smell, and touch. We always want scientific explanation before we conclude that this thing is real. But let me tell you, God cannot be found in the laboratory. Amen? And this is similar to what's happening to the first Easter. This is so cool because I'm going to prove to you that the first Easter experienced social distancing just like what we're doing right now. You guys ready? All right, so the first, first, first one, Jesus showed up to Mary Magdalene. Just one people, right? And on that evening, on the first week, Jesus showed himself to where? To the disciples. See, still a small crowd, six feet apart. I'm just kidding. I hope this fact encourages, encourages you though, that we are celebrating Easter differently. Even though a lot of things are canceled, guess what? Easter is still not canceled, amen? Then after that, the disciples told Thomas that they saw Jesus because Thomas wasn't with them. You know what happened? He didn't believe them because he wants physical evidence in fact this is what thomas said if we can go to john 20 to 25 john 20 to 25 says unless i see the nail marks in his hands and put my fingers where the nails were and put my hands into his side i will not believe 
Thomas is looking for a physical evidence, right? It's just like some of us, as I mentioned earlier. We always want physical proof. Then a week has passed and all the disciples were together again in the house. Then Jesus showed up again, and this time with Thomas. I want us to continue on John 20, 26 to 7. 20, John 20, 26 to 27, as we continue. He says, a week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your fingers here. See my hands? Reach out your hands and put it on my side. Stop doubting and believe. Look, maybe some of you who are watching right now, and the reason why you are still an unbeliever until this day is because you are looking for that physical evidence. And maybe you've done, you've done a lot of research to prove if that hole in Jesus Christ's hands is real. And I want to deliver the same message to you. Friend, stop doubting and start believing. Stop doubting and start believing. It is not necessary to see Jesus Christ in order to believe. That is the point of faith in the first place. Amen? In fact, Hebrews 11.1 1 told us that faith is the evidence of things not seen. Yes, man, it was an honor for the early Christians to see the, their Lord in their naked eyes. But that is not what saved them. You know what saved them? They were saved not by seeing, but by believing. Not by seeing, but by believing. Look at Thomas, man. He saw a lot of miracles that Jesus performed in his ministry on earth. He saw how Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, how he healed the sick, how he made the blind see, and yet still having a hard time that Jesus rose from the dead. Wow, right? Friends, I guess it boils down to this question. Do you want to be blessed? Do you want to be blessed? I'll wait in the comment section for your answer. Do you want to be blessed? Amen? Well, Jesus said in His own words, as we continue on verse 29, because you have seen me, you have believed. Check this out. I love this. He said, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Amen? You and I today cannot see Christ, nor we can see the miracles He performed, right? But He, the record, the record is here, and that is the Bible, and that is all we need. Every time you read the Bible, you come face to face with Jesus Christ, you will see how He lived, what He said, and what He did, and all of those words are still alive and active today. All of the evidence points to the conclusion that He is indeed God came into flesh as the Savior of the world. In fact, verse 30, as it continues as it said, Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in the book. But this are written that you may what? That you may what? Believe. That Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Let me specify that, right? Not proving, but believing by faith that he is real at this point you may argue that you don't believe the bible all right fair enough but let me challenge you with this thought this three thought all right i think is very timely in what's happening today and this is the first argument what if you die today believing that there is no god and it happens that you are right there is no god all right what did you gain what did you gain pride all right you are right sure you are correct but we all go into one state point blank i wish there's an effect where it will turn blank right now anyways moving forward so that's the first argument second argument what if you die today believing that there is a god and it happens that there is god which is what we believe for amen what did you gain well according to the bible we gain eternal life come on this is the promise to those who believe amen john 3 16 so that whoever believe in him shall not perish but what have an eternal life and here's the last argument what if you die today believing that there is no God 
And it happens that there is a God, which I'm 100% sure God is real. What did you gain? Well, according to the scripture, you gain eternal damnation in hell. Revelations 21, 8 says, But as for the cowardly, the faithless, you can underline the word faithless, the detestable, as for the murderers, the sexual immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all the liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. And this is the most logical argument I can give you today. Man, I didn't even use the Bible for it. It's just logical reasoning. Look, you can believe whatever you want, but I am confident that He is real and I am hoping and placing my trust in Jesus Christ. Amen? My life is a living proof that God is real because I could have been in jail or died years ago because of my shortcomings and because of my sins. But I am thankful that there is a God who paid for my sins. Bible said that it's, it's supposed to be the wages of sin is death. But because of one man's righteousness, we are all made righteous in him amen friend or whoever you are who's watching are you a Thomas do you still doubt God let me tell you the story of Easter is not just a fairy tale but there's a power through it that if we believe in our hearts that God raised Jesus from the dead according to Romans 10 9 that you will be saved his resurrection is not just for a show, but a proof that Jesus, God, Jesus is God and the resurrected King is offering us now a new resurrected life with Him. Maybe today is your day of salvation. And please, I don't want you to look at this as if I'm forcing you to do this. I'm just preaching the gospel at its purity to you. You know what I felt I felt the rush of the spirit right now, all right? I don't wanna miss this moment, so I wanna pause real, real fast and pray this very important prayer. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, I pray for whoever is watching this. Lord, if they haven't accepted you, Holy Spirit, I pray that you will send conviction to this person to accept your salvation, the most precious gift of humanity. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Friend, if you have never made this decision to follow Christ, what are you waiting for? Do so right now. John 3.36 says, Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains in them. What I just shared to you is the message of the gospel. And the gospel is so simple to understand that even a little child would understand it. That because of one man's sin, the fall of humanity entered. Sin enters to the world. And we need an antidote. We need a solution. And that is why God, all loving, all powerful, all merciful had to send his son Jesus Christ as a substitute for the sin of many Jesus Christ incarnated in this world showed us what it looks like what it looks like to live a life in full and in his incarnation he was persecuted death was in him and in that death he was not doing it because he wanted to be with God again. But remember friends, he died because he wants us to be with him eternally. And that's what he did. Because of our sin, he has to die for our sins. He became the curse of what supposed to be our curse. And after three days, the earth was shaken. And guess what? He rose again. He proved that He is not a lie, that Jesus is really God, and this is why we are celebrating today. And that is the gospel. It's so simple that if you tell the story to your child, he will understand it. And if today, if you're listening, and if you're ready, if you know that the Holy Spirit is calling you for salvation that is made available for you 2,000 years ago, 
I normally would ask people to raise their hands, but since we are virtual, you know, maybe just send me a hand emoji or I'll just simply ask you to pray this prayer with me wherever you are. Amen. Just wherever you are, bow your heads and pray this prayers with me. Bow our heads and pray. Father, Jesus Christ, I believe that you are Lord. Lord, I believe that you raised Jesus from the dead. Lord, forgive me for my sins, Lord God. Forgive me for my unbelief, Lord God. And from now on, Lord God, I'm putting my trust, I'm putting my faith, I'm putting my hope in you, Father God. Lord, forgive me for my shortcomings. Lord, now I want to experience this life and life in abundant, Lord God. Lord, you promised, Lord God, that becoming a Christian doesn't exempt from any suffering. But Lord, let it be, Lord, because we know that we have an eternal life waiting for us. And we're so excited to meet with you face to face again. But for now, Lord God, I pray that you will accept me, Lord God, in your kingdom. Forgive me of my sin. I repent of my sin. And I thank you, Lord God, for what you've done on the cross. And thank you, Lord God, for resurrecting. And because of your resurrection, now I am also resurrecting a new life with you, Jesus Christ. Lord, I believe in you. I don't need logic to believe in you. I just need faith, so I'm putting it to you, Father God. I accept you, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. And from now on, I will build my life and my foundation to you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. If you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to welcome you to the family of Christ. Church fam, can we comment an emoji to celebrate with them? Amen. Let me tell you, it's the greatest gift you have ever received. And we also want to follow up with you. We believe that your relationship, relationship with Christ doesn't stop there. So we are giving our phone number in the screen below so that you can text, I accept Jesus and we will give you the next step. It doesn't end here, all right? Uh, we believe that we want you to have a flourishing relationship in the church, in the Word of God, and also to, for you to understand the real theology. Amen? And so we're excited to celebrate you, your new birthday, which is your salvation. I pray that if this blesses you, if you know someone that needs the salvation, if you want to invite someone for salvation, share, tag someone, and let's continue to spread the gospel together. I love you guys, and Jesus Christ is the King, and He is alive. And because He is alive, you too can be alive. Love you guys. For our giving, go to identity.church slash give. Enjoy the short montage of myself playing around in the backyard. Jesus died on the cross for us so 
that one day we can be in heaven with him. Three is a tomb. After Jesus died, he was buried in a tomb with a big rock in front of the door. He stayed there for three days. The eaves were empty. The tomb is empty. When Jesus' friends went to visit him at the tomb, they saw that the big rock had been rolled away and the tomb was empty. Jesus' clothes were folded up nicely. Ah, uh, Sister Vision. Jesus rose from the dead. He now lives in heaven with God. And we can now talk, pray, and sing with him today. And that's what Easter is all about. I'm about. Go tell everyone this great news. Great news. No, you're not looking at the camera, and you're not happy. It's happy. Okay, you show mommy you're happy. Jesus is alive! Yay! He's alive! Luis, amigo! Tequila! Julian, say, Jesus is alive! Yay! Jesus is alive! Jesus is alive! Oh, look inside the Lord, oh.